Good evening, everybody. Yes. Big applause for our talented piano. Please take a seat. We have a very exciting program for you. We're honored to have Congressman Sherman here, and we have Biki Shah here. Being chairman of Honorable Table One. But um, sit down, please, Jansen. If you had attended this past week our Papa Emerging Leaders workshop, where we had 30 very talented young people from Taipei come to Washington, D.C. to see how Washington worked, you would have noticed every morning that we did the so-called FAPA cheer, the FAPA chant. And so to start this evening of in a tra traditional fashion, I want you all to repeat after me or to chant with me four times. Vice President of Papa. 
Hello. 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 Hello
states that the two cornerstone of U.S. Taiwan relations are the 1979 Taiwan Relations Act and the 1982 Six Assurance, completely leaving out the verified three communique, and also the U.S. Taiwan, the uh, U.S. One China policy. You have far more to thank for. We saw to it that the 2019, in 2016, both House and Senate unanimously the past the legislation stating that the TRA and Six Assurance are the cornerstone of U.S.-Taiwan relations, setting the tone for the broader and wider acceptance of this idea whose time has come. And when you read the governors of Thai, uh, America, American states, mayors, American or American towns, uh, and the city council of American cities issue proclamation this past May. It dedicated the week after Mother's Day as a Taiwanese American Heritage Week. You also have all kinds of thank you. That was our idea in 1990. And this annual week becomes more widely spread, celebrated every year in this country. It goes without saying that we at FAPA could not have done this without the support of all FAPA members and the supporters. We all communicate as a brothers and sisters, and we all work hand, work and hand together. As Benjamin Franklin once famous said, we must all hand together, otherwise we will all hand separate. So let's realize the, and be proud of how important the work is that we do it in Washington, D.C. and all over the nation on behalf of our beloved Taiwan. As one of our scholar friends once told us, the future of Taiwan will be determined on Capitol Hill. Think about this for a bit. We at FAPA believe that the future of Taiwan rests on two pillars. One is the will of pe the people of Taiwan to hold the night and to fight to maintain Taiwan's current independence. Yes, we are turning into internationally recognized the German independence. And the two is the U.S. support. That second pillar is the pillar that we here in the room need to prevent from crumbling. I don't believe it will crumble, but we cannot take anything for granted. Day after day, year after year. U.S.-Taiwan region today are the best ever, and we have so many people to thank for. And we want to take, we, we want to keep this in that way. Every day we need to keep cultivating and rubbing that pro that the U.S.-Taiwan regions today. We don't, if we don't do it, who will do it? So in conclusion, I thank again all of you gathered here tonight for your never-ending commitment to our country of birth, our beloved Taiwan, and to FAPA. And I also want to take this uh, opportunity to thank our staff. Our staff worked very hard for uh, many things to keep FAPA going as uh, it is now. Uh, we have a very small staff. They put in low hours, weekends. I just want to uh, take this time to, to, to be very grateful. Thank you. I also want to take this opportunity to thank my family, and my wife, and my, my son, and my daughter. <laughs> Without it, for it is hard. In the end, I want to say happy Forest Fafa. Thank you.
Taiwan Travel Act in the room, on one table, flanking Ambassador B. Kim Sha. Warm applause for the whole... So we are very grateful. Today we have uh, uh, Ambassador Xiao with us. Let's give her a big hand. We have uh, 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 Congressman Steve Schaber with us. We also have uh, Congressman Bill Sherman with us from California. And we are very fortunate we all have a uh, visitor from Taiwan, Wang Dingyu. Um, we have all, uh, we have uh, uh, Jiang Minxin from uh, New York. He's, uh, he's uh, well known for his support on the, from the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, yes. And we have all the um, Former president of WAPA in, in this room, the serial with us. Uh, do you let's start with the uh, first? <laughs> uh, I think Wen Yan is first, right? Wen Yan Chen. <laughs> and then we have uh, Ming Ji Wu. We have uh, um, Mark, Mark Gao. Peter Chen. And there will be an opportunity, photo opportunity, where everybody's cutting a big cake here at the end of the evening. <laughs> Make sure you get a piece. You don't need to take a photo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have uh, Mike Fontaine uh, from the DVD office. <laughs> We have Garrett. Um, and, and, uh, <laughs> Garrett used to work for us. Now he's free. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also have uh, uh, Jenny, Jennifer Hong. Jennifer Hu. Where's Jennifer? Hi, hey, Jennifer. She's a uh, chair, chair of the TPI Global for Taiwanese. I think we have a, a, a few other uh, friends. Uh, Raise your hands if you think you're a VIP. <laughs> <laughs> I know I, we have uh, people from uh, Hong Kong's uh, movement. Uh, uh, Sunny, are you there? Sunny. Chen Weiping. Chen Weiping? Weiping, stand up. Chen Weiping, the central movement. tricky if you introduce a member of Congress and you say what he or she did, because that's going to be part of their presentation. So I'll be very brief. Uh, only want to say, as Means already pointed out, that we're very proud that uh, Congressman Shadow and Congressman Sherman both introduced the Taiwan Travel Act, which became law in March 2018. And before that, they introduced legislation, which was also passed unanimously in both houses of Congress, saying that the six assurances, President Reagan's six assurances, and the Taiwan Relations Act are the cornerstones of U.S.-Taiwan relations. And ever since, you have seen that the six assurances crept back into the whole American political lingo on Capitol Hill. But the only thing is that next we want to get rid of the three vilified Shanghai communiques, the three communiques. We have nothing to do with it. It was done behind the backs of so that is going to happen hopefully sooner rather than later and hopefully with the help of Congressman Shadow and Congressman Sherman. But anyway, 
give a big hand for Congressman Brett Sherman. Sherman from California's best named city, Sherman Oaks. <laughs> I am so happy to be here tonight to celebrate the 40th anniversary of one of the most effective foreign policy advocacy organizations in Washington, bar none, the Formosa Association for Public Affairs. 40 years of education, an impressive, impressive list of accomplishments. And you know, it's, it's not that easy because you actually have some powerful forces on the other side, like the second largest economy in the world, which can fund and has relationships with all the power centers in the United States. But in spite of that, the Formosa Association of Public Affairs has been successful again and again in doing what we are doing here today, and that brings us together. And that is to work for free, democratic, and sovereign Taiwan. It's important for the United States. It's important for the people of Taiwan. It's important for the Indo-Pacific region. It's important for the entire world. And I uh, want to thank uh, the uh, Papa National President, uh, uh, Minzi uh, Chen, uh, for inviting me. But I especially want to thank Cohen Blau for our friendship over so many years. And, you know, I work with a lot of groups all over the world that want to somehow make their case in Washington. Because I've been on the Foreign Affairs Committee for, well, since I had hair. Um, and they say, well, how do we do it? I say, study Cohen Block. Study Pop. Organize like that. And you will get your message to the American Congress and to the American people. I also want to uh, uh, acknowledge Ken Wu, my friend from Los Angeles. I've got so many friends here from Los Angeles. And also here with me is Sarah Katz Nelson, my current foreign policy advisor. And Molly Sherman, my future foreign policy advisor. Securing Taiwan's future um, is going to be so important to the Indo-Pacific region. Uh, as I've been a member of the Taiwan Caucus for, I guess, about 26 years, all 26 years I've been in Congress. For 26 years I've been on the Foreign Affairs Committee where I'm the number two uh, Democrat. And I'm a former chair of the Asia Subcommittee. Uh, the Taiwan's Relations Act the six assurances all make it clear that our goal is to maintain peace, security, and stability in the Western Pacific, to preserve and promote close, friendly relations between the people of the United States and the people of Taiwan. And over uh, the years, the United States has held to that position, and I think we're doing a better job of holding that position than we did when I first got here 26 years ago. In my first years in Congress, I led an effort uh, to add to the then National Defense Authorization Act a provision to ensure that Taiwan is given equal priority in terms of arms sales with our NATO allies. Since then, I have either authored or co-sponsored uh, 50 bills, uh, all of them bipartisan in support of the U.S.-Taiwan relationship and to stand up to an increasingly aggressive People's Republic of China. or authored uh, six bills, almost always with my friend Steve Shepard. In fact, I can mention a lot of legislation that's pending today in the House, and every bill I mention is either going to be Sherman Shabbat or Shabbat Sherman. <laughs> um, we have got to deter Chinese aggression. We've got to get the Secretary of the Treasury to publish a report on the financial institutions and accounts connected with senior officials of the People's Republic of China. 
and we have to fight to involve Taiwan in the World Health Organization. We have one country that failed to tell the world at the very beginning of this viral crisis what was happening. And you have another country that is doing its very best to help its own citizens and the world deal with the results of that. When we decide whether Taiwan should be with the World Health Organization, we should ask, are you pro-human or pro-virus? <laughs> if you're pro, every country in this world should be in favor of every country in this world participating in the World Health Organization. In this Congress, uh, I've authored uh, this one, Sherman Chabot, along with uh, Steve, the Taiwan Diplomatic Review Act. This bill is a bipartisan effort to direct the State Department to seek uh, negotiations with Taiwan's, really, embassy in the United States, which is referred to, as you know, as TECRO. What a name. <laughs> Who understands that? You have to explain it every day. And rename it the Taiwan Representative Office in the United States. And when China, Taiwanese officials come to the United States to represent their country, they should not be here on an investor visa. They're, well, they're investing in the US Taiwan relationship. They should be here on a uh, visa that recognizes their diplomatic status. And the bill also requires that the director of the American Institute in Taiwan be appointed by the president and confirmed by the Senate, just like all our other ambassadors. Yeah. Our good friend Bob Menendez uh, is working in the Senate on his Taiwan Policy Act. He recently pushed it uh, through his committee, but it's not quite as strong in its current form as it ought to be, so send it to us, and uh, we'll put it on steroids. <laughs> um, just this week, Congressman Sherman, uh, Shabbat, and this one Shabbat Sherman, uh, introduced uh, the uh, H.R. 8842, which would authorize the transfer of certain defense articles and services to Taiwan. This is important because we see that uh, the uh, People's Republic of China is flexing its muscles in the Taiwan Strait and is blatantly transgressing Taiwan's airspace. This bill would authorize uh, priority delivery of excess U.S. defense articles, uh, helping uh, to uh, more quickly and efficiently provide Taiwan with the military equipment it needs uh, while serving as a deterrent to Chinese aggression. Um, I know Steve will be up here and he'll describe the bill in even more detail. Uh, Congressman Shabbat and I, have, uh, in, back in 2017, uh, worked together. Uh, this one was, yeah, this one was, uh, this one was Sherman Shabbat, the Taiwan Travel Act. That made it the policy for us to have welcome Taiwanese officials here and have American officials go there. And I'd like to think that Speaker Pelosi recognized the importance of that bill as national policy in her recent uh, visit uh, to uh, Taiwan. And I know that we have uh, Ting uh, Yu Wang uh, here from, uh, from Taiwan, showing that uh, in Taiwan there's respect for that idea that we should have travel. Now there's one disadvantage with that bill, and that is in the old days uh, it was we had, and we just did to some extent now, we have this fiction that a Taiwanese official visiting the United States is really on their way to Belize or El Salvador, and is just refueling. And we, and they'd always do it in Los Angeles, and they'd throw a big dinner in my district. <laughs> but frankly, uh, and we want to keep those visits to Los Angeles, but we want to have, uh, we want to have Taiwanese officials visit the United States and, and visit the capital of the United States, which until I'm successful, I'm trying to move the national capital to Los Angeles, so that was all. <laughs> but until I'm able to do that is Washington, D.C. Now, uh, 
I'm going to be pushing, and I know Steve will too, that we should have the Foreign Minister of Taiwan, Joseph Wu, testify before our committee. This could be in person, or in the post-COVID world, we're doing an awful lot of, uh, of testimony by, uh, uh, you know, virtual. But either way, the main members of our committee should hear directly from uh, the, uh, the ambassador and directly from the foreign minister. Now, uh, going to go off script a little bit and make a, a few more points. The whole world is watching Ukraine, and we've learned a few things from Ukraine. We've learned that a small nation can fight successfully for its independence. We've learned that systems that follow the NATO US standard work very well, and those based on the Soviet and we've learned that the United, with the United States in the lead, we are able to organize the whole world to support a country that is invaded. Hopefully Beijing is noting this, but one thing that we could do that would make it stronger is provide in statute, look forward to working with you on this, Steve, to say that M MFN for China would be eliminated automatically without further action if China blockades or invades Taiwan. One other point I want to make, and I know this is the longer that I told them I'd give a short speech, I like it. <laughs> um, and that is, if you look at the history of nations, you'll see that one of the uh, most difficult issues is to explain to your country, why are these guys, or these guys and gals, running things? Now the best answer is democracy. They were elected by the people. There have been other theories that have convinced people to accept this or that leaders. In Europe, for a couple of millennia, they had the divine right of kings. Uh, why is this guy running thing? Well, well, his father. He's the first one, so his father. Okay. They at least accepted it. Uh, in Iran, they go for with the Islamic scholars. They appointed the supreme leader. There are not all Iranians accept that, but some do. And for many decades, the answer, because, you know, not only is Islam a religion, communism is a religion. And uh, the communists in power would say, well, why are we in power? Well, we have the vanguard of the proletariat. So let me ask you, which of these justifies and provides legitimacy to the government in Beijing? Well, I remember when they claimed to be the vanguard of the proletariat, but have you... Can you imagine them saying that without laughing? So they have a problem. Now, as long as they have economic growth, their answer is, well, we're running things because, hey, shut up. We made you rich. But the greatest threat to Taiwan may not be China getting stronger, but China getting weaker. Because when this government can, and no government can provide economic growth at above average levels decade after decade, the United States government, because we had democracy, because we answered the question of legitimacy, survived when we saw a one-third decline in our GDP during the 1930s. I don't think the government in Beijing could survive a 10% decline in Chinese GDP. So what will they do? If they feel weak, they will go to the last refuge of political scoundrels, and that is extreme nationalism. They will say, we're at war, shut up, follow us. And unfortunately, if they're at war, they're focusing on Taiwan. So we have to manage this relationship uh, carefully and uh, make it plain that to the, to the people of China, that they are entitled to a government of their choice, and they should make sure that they have leaders that can have a good policy for China, not just a uh, exaggerated supranationalism pointed at another uh, country uh, off their shores. So I look forward to working with uh, all of you. Uh, the core strength of our relationship is our shared democratic values, 
Uh, I have seen that in person along with Steve when we visited Taiwan. Uh, and uh, I salute the Formosa Association. Fapa. We are Fapa. <laughs> I'm Brad Sherman. Thank you very much. Instead of uh, urging the Congressman Sheba to uh, stick around for two hours, two hour dinner, um, I think we do that now. So we have a surprise for the Congressman, and I feel a little bit bad because Congressman Sheba already said about six weeks ago that he would attend, and so we're all prepared and everything, and I hope that Congressman Sherman doesn't feel left out a little bit, but um, maybe next year. <laughs> Okay, so this is, uh, first I want to uh, thank uh, uh, Congressman Sherman, and then we also want to thank uh, Congressman Sherman for joining us. Uh, Congressman Sh Sherman, you are really, you really are Taiwan's number one friend in Congress. I said it, I said it. <laughs> yeah, you both. Yeah, uh, anyway, uh, two number one in a row. <laughs> <laughs> one <laughs> so we actually will pick this uh, segment uh, of the program again in a bit later, only but it's because uh, it involves uh, Congressman Shava. So we'll do it right now. So uh, yes, it is now time for something new. Something we have never done before. And let me explain. Over the past four decades, uh, FAPA has uh, handed out many awards at its annual board meeting for best, the best chapter, for outstanding chapter performance for individual donor and contributor to FAPA. But we realized some time ago that there exists no award in FAPA. That covers the outstanding work and contribution of individuals to FAPA and to Taiwan independence. That are so awesome, so outstanding, so magnificent, so beyond the call of duty that no current award captured that kind of passion for FAPA and for Taiwan. So this year, after we, uh, we decided several years ago to create a new award, and it will be a very Covenant award because we only have five recipients of this award today. Yes, up to tonight, there are only five recipients of this FAPA Legion Award in the world. <laughs> it is therefore an honor and a pleasure for me to present these five. Um, FAPA Legion Award to five individuals. These five individuals are so well known in their community, in our community, that they really do not need a long biographical introduction. So this uh, FAPA Legion Award goes to Congressman Steve Shaban. Shabat is Taiwan's best friend in the U.S. Congress. He has done so much for Taiwan. His contributions to Taiwan are so too many to mention. Let me highlight that he introduced the Taiwan Travel Act, just like uh, Congressman uh, Sherman just uh, mentioned. Arguably the most important piece of legislation since Taiwan Relation Act. He also introduced legislation in reaffirming that the TRA and the Six Assurance are the cornerstone of U.S.-Taiwan relations. That resolution was passed unanimously by the House and the Senate and has really brought President Reagan's Six Assurance to the forefront of American political mindset. A rousing applause for Congressman Steve Shaba, please. Congressman, to say a few words. 
members and a um, big welcome for uh, Congressman uh, Steve Shadda. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I, I'm shocked and I can't tell you how much I appreciate this. It's such a great honor. It's such a great honor. Um, and, and thank you for inviting me here uh, this evening. Uh, thank you for inviting Brad Sherman as well. We work together on, on all these things. So um, I, I feel remiss if, if he doesn't get it next year, I'm going to have to give him mine because he really, he works just as hard as I do. Um, and, and so I really do appreciate it. And, and he comes from Sherman Oaks, uh, and, and I, I'd like to say I come from Shabbat Oaks, but I, I, I come from Cincinnati, Ohio, um, and uh, I just can't tell you how much I appreciate this. And, and it's a great honor to speak here. I, I will be relatively brief here. Um, I actually did learn a lesson, Kunz heard this lesson I learned many years ago when I spoke to my daughter's class. She was in the first grade, and so I was speaking to all these little first graders, and after I got done talking to these little first graders, a little girl came up to me, and she's just a little thing, and she looked up at me and she said, Sir, that's the worst speech I ever heard. <laughs> I felt kind of bad, you know, and what I say wrong to these kids. So my daughter wanted to cheer me up, and so she came over to me and said, Dad, don't worry about her. She just repeats what all the other kids say. So, <laughs> so, so I will keep it very, very short. Um, very short. Um, it is an honor to speak here at FAPA's uh, 40th anniversary uh, banquet. Uh, throughout its history, as, as Brad said, FAPA has been at the center of the U.S.-Taiwan relationship, a partnership that's brought peace and prosperity and deep interpersonal ties to our two countries. Uh, in fact, FAPA has probably done more than any other organization to support uh, the relationship between our countries, and notably, it's FAPA's work that has, in no small part, shifted the debate in Washington uh, from accepting China's bogus claims about uh, Taiwan to the current thinking that Taiwan is really an independent country. And as many of you know, during my first uh, campaign for Congress back in 1994, Brad and I have both been here 26 years. He's been here 26 straight years. I actually got here two years before Brad, but he's done something I couldn't do. He's won every election. Um, I lost one back in 08. Obama beat McCain in my district by 11%, and I lost that year. But I came back two years later and won the seat back. So we've actually, even though I got here two, two years earlier, we've been here the same the same uh, amount of time, but um, I had, that first time I was running, I had two Taiwanese American doctors who came to me in Cincinnati in my law office, and they said, when you win, not if you win, when you win, we'd like you to work on issues relative to Taiwan, and I knew where Taiwan was, and yes, I knew the difference between Taiwan and Thailand, but, <laughs> but I didn't know as much as I do now. Um, and, and I told them I would work, and so I did. And, and uh, they came back, and they said, okay, you won, and now we gotta get to work, and we have. Um, it was a, the two doctors were Dr. C.T. Lee and Dr. Tuong back in, in Cincinnati, and they were great people. And, uh, and, and if you know anything also, running, uh, oftentimes when you're running, you've got the odds of winning against an incumbent are pretty tough, and I was running against an incumbent, and, and I did beat him. Um, so, but now that I am an incumbent, I'm glad, like Brad is, that it's, it's much uh, tougher to beat an incumbent since we are incumbents. But um, what I've got to learn is how important FAPA is about advancing Taiwan's causes. It's, it's so important, self-determination, um, the people of Taiwan, it's so important for the world to see how well Taiwan uh, has come. Our, our shared journey has seen some major victories in, in 2002, and I'm not going to go through all of them because I know the only thing standing between uh, you and your dinner is me. So I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to wrap this up pretty pretty soon. Um, we, we have had a number of of, of victories thus far. Um, the Taiwan Caucus, by the way, is now the largest caucus. When we started it 20 years ago. 
We weren't the, we're now the largest caucus in the United States Congress of any country. Both Republicans and Democrats, and Taiwan for many years, as Brad knows, was uh, the second largest caucus. The largest was India, and of course India has over a billion people, and Taiwan doesn't have quite, quite a billion people, obviously, um, but we were sec uh, the Taiwan caucus was second, but then it surpassed India. So now Brad and I, uh, we think that's great, but we have mixed feelings because we're actually co-chairs of the India caucus too. So. <laughs> But uh, we get all the important caucuses as far as our, I'm concerned. We really do work very closely together. And he mentioned Kung Lao. I can't, I can't tell you how important Kung Lao has been uh, to the college over the years. I really, I really can't. And, and I'm so glad that I get to call B. Kim ambassador now because I've known her for so many years and, and you couldn't have picked anybody better. And I, I say ambassador because that, that's what she is. And I also say, and I also say country, because Taiwan, for all intents, is a de facto nation. It, it's a country. And I think at this point, maybe I've got a couple more pages, but I think I'm going to put this away, or pretty soon you're going to say this is the worst speech you ever heard. So, so I will just tell you how much I appreciate uh, the award. I, I really do. Um, and I think what I'm going to do maybe is Brad and I will maybe on a weekly or monthly basis, I'll let Brad have it in his office for half the time at least. And, and you always hear, again, let me conclude with this, you hear Democrats and Republicans were always fighting. And there are a lot of issues we do fight about. When it, but when it comes to Taiwan and India, um, we, we really do work together. And that's how... The United States Congress actually works. I was going to, I was going to go beyond that, but it does work um, because you do have people that are willing to put politics aside and, and work. And uh, God bless you all. God bless your families. God bless the United States, and God bless Taiwan.
徛咧吼。How's your dinner? Oh, Japa, oh. Well, I'll punch it on the way to be in the middle. It won't go more, more, more. Now we are going to watch a video from Taiwan's Vice President William Lai.台湾人尊重祖国会，感恩主，总会长，由金永富总会长，小米平台长，各位关心台湾、支持台湾的美国国会议员先进，以及美国为台湾的民主自由、安全和尊严拍平的各位先进，拍拍朋友，大家平安，
我拜托各位发牌的者，咱一定爱保留四十年来建设台湾的初心，大家徛做伙，继续同心支持台湾，继续向美国国界传达台湾人民的心声，支持本土激进的团队，稳健的改革路线，做政府最坚强的后盾，共同为创造更加民主、更加繁荣的台湾来做伙打拼。最后。清洁再次感谢花帕，这四十年来为促进民主、保障台湾安全、争取国际支持、甲改善台美关系所做的贡献，也再次祝福花帕四十周年庆祝大会圆满成功。各位在美国的朋友，身体健康，万事如意，台湾加油，花帕加油，多谢大家。
uh, to this effort in deepening the partnership with the United States and supporting Taiwan's global visibility. So I think it's fair to say that since I was an intern at FAPA 30 years ago, I grew up with FAPA. I aged with FAPA. <laughs> In my mind, aging with FAPA means that we've all become wiser and stronger with age. And it's certainly an honor to represent TECRO here in a different role in participating uh, in this anniversary uh, event. And uh, in addition to thanking all of you over and over again uh, for your contributions, um, I think I want to take a few minutes to uh, share with you some of the priorities of uh, Tecro's work uh, these days in Washington and the hope that uh, we can count on your continuing uh, support. I think up and the first priority I want to highlight that is a foremost uh, issue is Taiwan's security. I think the evolution of events uh, inside the People's Republic of China, including from the treatment of Uyghurs uh, to Hong Kong, uh, the deprivation of basic rights and freedoms in Hong Kong, and then of course the recent over and un overreaction and unnecessary provocations and dangerous actions across the strait by the People's Liberation Army all highlight and remind us the urgency of strengthening Taiwan's self-defense. I think the recent unfortunate tragedy far away in Europe, in, in Ukraine, also reminds us of the urgency. And that's the greatest irony. It appears that we're on different sides of the globe, but we are facing similar challenges. And I think we cannot waste a single day being complacent about where we are. It's important that we put our energies into finding ways to make Taiwan more secure. And so that is the number one priority of Team Tecro nowadays. Of course, the United States is Taiwan's most important partner in security. And so I certainly hope that we can count on all of you through your grassroots diplomacy, through your grassroots advocacy efforts as Taiwanese Americans to also highlight the need to deepen the security partnership uh, as you engage with your friends and members in Congress. Another very important priority that uh, we are working on is in Taiwan's economic resilience and deepening the economic and trade ties with the United States. I'm pleased to say that uh, in the coming weeks, uh, there will be some very important events uh, highlighting progress in our relationship. We will be commencing trade negotiations under the Taiwan-US Initiative of on 21st Century Trade. And hopefully these negotiations, as we have announced, uh, will lead to one or more bilateral agreements that will further deepen our trade relationship to the extent that our trade can grow and flourish and make Taiwan more engaged uh, and diversified uh, in our relationship on the economic level with the rest of the world. Another very important economic-related event coming up and I hope that I can count on all of you to come back to DC for that, is the first ever Taiwan Expo in the United States. The Taiwan Expo will take place October 12th to the 14th at the Reagan Center, which is on Pennsylvania Avenue, uh, right in the middle of town, where as far as I know, uh, nearly 200 companies from Taiwan have already registered to join, bringing in the latest products and technology uh, from Taiwan. I'm told that an entire EV electrical vehicle will be moved from Taiwan into the Reagan Center for display. 
but not just EV vehicles. Batteries, charging stations, another major theme will be metaverse, the virtual reality, gadgets and equipment uh, that Taiwan is also uh, rapidly and actively producing. We'll have another special session on biomedicine as well. And of course, any Taiwan event will not be successful without food and culture. <laughs> so I want to welcome all of you to this Taiwan Expo, a display of progress in Taiwan industry and in the Taiwan economy, and also an opportunity to further engage with their counterparts in the United States in fostering those closer business and commercial ties. Of course, another important continuing priority is Taiwan's international space. I know all of you have been dedicated to this. Um, we're grateful that as a result of many of your contributions and efforts, uh, the United States has been our most reliable partner in supporting Taiwan's international space. I was truly touched a few months ago when a vote in Congress supporting Taiwan's meaningful participation in the WHO was a vote of 425 to zero. I used to be a politician in Taiwan. On TV, we watch American politics every day, though we're not involved in American politics, and we know how hard it is to get a unanimous vote, unanimous support. And I think that bipartisan support for Taiwan also serves to fortify public confidence in Taiwan that we are not alone. Despite all the challenges, the geostrategic dangers, the volatile regional evolution of events, that we always know we have a strong friend here in the United States. But in addition to our partnership with the United States, we're grateful that more and more friends in the international community are also increasingly willing to express support for Taiwan. And I think it's also important that we as Taiwanese or Taiwanese Americans respond to their gestures of support with our ways of gratitude and further engaging with them. Whether it's Guatemala or Paraguay, countries that officially recognize Taiwan and also are those reliable voices in international organizations like the United Nations in supporting Taiwan's participation. We're also making some new friends. For example, Lithuania. Um, we've opened an office. I know it's a dream of many of you to have an office called Taiwanese. And the Lithuanians have done that. But they are also... Courageous people of Lithuania are also under tremendous pressure from China, including economic sanctions and other efforts at political interference and coercion. So I think it's also important that we support this growing partnership with friends such as Lithuania by either on your next family vacation visiting them, or if you run a business, Look for some business opportunities with them, invest with them. I think all of these will serve to make our relationship much more sustainable and meaningful and substantial in the long run. And of course, there are many other friends in the international community who are there for us, especially during our vulnerable times when we needed access to vaccines, for example. The United States, Japan, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Lithuania, all lent a helping hand to us. But they all made the point that their help to Taiwan was also in part because Taiwan is a force for good. And Taiwan deserves to be part of the global community. And Taiwan is always willing to help others. And I think that's also the spirit of many of you as you continue to contribute to your communities around the United States, to FAPA, but also uh, to the Taiwanese American communities, and uh, working in partnership with many members of Congress. 
So in addition to sharing with you our priorities and hoping that we can continue to work with FAPA on many of these issues, uh, I also want to say that I know you've done a lot here uh, with members of Congress inside the Beltway. But another very important part of our work involves extending Taiwan's visibility all over the United States. And that includes in state legislatures. Um, I was recently in Ohio, some of you were there too, Columbus, where the Ohio State Legislature also set up a Taiwan caucus. And your Papa legend, Steve Shabbat, was also there for the founding of the Ohio Taiwan Caucus as he was a founding member of the Taiwan Caucus here in Washington. And one after another, we are building new Taiwan caucuses around the United States. Last week, I hosted the Delaware Legislators uh, Taiwan Caucus. And I'm sure there will be many more. And the significant importance of these, these state legislators, even though it's not customary for legislators to be as active in foreign policy, but I think they have a role in grassroots American diplomacy. Because ultimately, every political decision made here in the Beltway is dependent on the desires, the hopes, and dreams of the American people, as well as those shared values that Americans have with us in freedom, in democracy. So I also hope to count on all of you as the grassroots foot soldiers in the various state legislatures in fortifying those partnerships on a grassroots level as well. Of course, there's a lot of work to do. I've called myself a cat warrior in the past. Lately, I feel like I'm an octopus. <laughs> I need more than eight tentacles at the same time as I multitask. Uh, but eight, even eight tentacles are not enough. I think um, keeping Taiwan free and secure and dignified, dignified requires the efforts of all of Taiwanese. It has to be an all of society effort as we have seen in other societies facing threats, uh, facing the challenges uh, that we are also facing in our part of the world. So I don't want to go on and on as I don't want to be, I don't want the little kid over there to say I gave the worst speech as she's waiting for her dessert or to go home. But um, I just want to again reiterate my deep gratitude to all of you for uh, being our partners in diplomacy and for being the strongest supporters of Taiwan, of Taiwan's international engagements, and of our rock solid partnership here with the United States. Thank you again for all your efforts. <laughs> All I want to say is thank you, people of Hualien. Don't shout about it. Thank 
讲，我希望看到一个囡仔咧讲，这是 worst speech。我刚刚有发现，这规条要结束，剩一个人也未讲话。<笑>我就发现我未当讲辛苦。然后英文的部分，那不，这 lifelong staff love。要求我的语言够好，但我头前先用台语来讲。那 Sunny， 台语你可能听不懂，你要原谅我五分钟。<笑>呃，先讲我头听到一挂好消息，比如你听到比琴，讲伊三十当前，其实看袂出来。三十当前，伊伫咧发牌的时阵，改坐地铁去抗议 Techro。但伊即马坐伫 Techro 内面替台湾咧拼外交，这三十天的时间，就是发拍，甲足侪台湾人用时间、用青春、用一切换来。我好想听，我以前在在美国，我拢会带普利多迄个、迄、那个阿龙甲苏贞英到，因两个先无啥变。你说我扮演因头毛都是白啊！<笑>我坐伫遮个隔壁，真正有机会啊！四十年前发牌创立的时阵，恁是青春、事业优秀，看台湾危险，追求一个民主、自由、独立的国家。用四十年的时间，今日咱正出侪少年辈，讲少年。You are the future， 但是这个 future 是建立在遮侪人的付出当中，所以这四十天，我应该甲你说到啥？这四十天，你用时间证明，恁是对。当时恁所抗议的，恁是徛在对的那边。今仔日所做的，有一天，可能是阮囝，可能是阮孙，我希望较遐久，会徛在遮。甲恁说到啥讲？今仔日咱有一个完整的国家，感谢发下，这是咱以后一定会。我头甲美琴讲，我头看到一个消息，哦，台湾的 U Twen 哎 U U Eighteen， 十八岁的棒球队，真歹势吼，我甲美国讲掉，啊，今仔日就甲荷兰讲掉，十九号呢。看美国甲韩国对一队赢，才当甲咱拍冠军。若可以当摕到冠军，台湾是连续两当十八岁少年家赢到世界千百个冠军。啊，所以，对个美国个拍拍吼，我是希望明仔载，明仔载美国队甲韩国队讲掉嘛吼。啊，十九号咱就看大家本事，朋友小输吼，咱嘛是爱赢。啊，即届来美国。有做侪代志，其实我即代下来美国吼，我本来是丢图的，阮二十二号立法院要开议，二十二号立法院要开议，啊每一届预算会议，我拢是各方外交委员会的招委，我坐遐顾钱，顾小米钱的钱，外交部的钱，各方部的钱，啊所以前期行出来走长期吼，办不离个确诊就袂当倒闭来。啊！但是感谢上帝，我伫个波兰先确诊过啊，即个应该袂。<笑>啊，不老透过 message 写过互我，讲希望我来，所以我原来是为着发发专程来，我准备来一天，我就要飞去。啊，无即无同你拍拖啊，因为我本来迄时我欠不老的吼，来不老。那但是后来美琴写也好，外交部也好，因为有一团吼。你讲台湾的国会三不定啦吼，各种拢有杂菜米毛啦吼。有一团台湾的国会第一家，啊，拄啊好，即、這个咱即、這个 senator 应该要通过即个 TPA。啊，迄团有叶玉兰，有陈玉珍，吼，有一群啊，听伊说的吼，我是个。啊，咱无来，敢那怪怪。咱对外外交是一点，国防是一点。We are the one. We represent. represent our country， 但总是惊一寡奇奇怪代志会发生，啊，真正有发生。因讲的话，我无爱直接转讲，你若听到恁血压真悬，来来 balance 的
所以即抓有要做遮个代志。啊，头先要来考大家，我后壁再用中文讲，用用中国话来讲。我跟三妮啊，跟他的女朋友在 Wisconsin Avenue， 我们在那边聊了两个小时。我们聊到一件事情，香港跟台湾的不一样。三妮很关心台湾的台湾的国防 ，talk about talk about 台湾 national defense issue， and he raised up a lot of questions. Why don't you accept that she means ODC concept? Can we defend Taiwan from China Chinese invasion? Something like this, and. I answer all his questions, and when I finish these answers, I told him that's the difference between Taiwan and Hong Kong. When you stand on the street to protest in Hong Kong, it's a social movement. It's domestic issue. No matter how difficult you are, no matter how terrible response from your government. Cannot get real help from outside. However, we have our own country, we have our own government, we have Tsai Ing-wen as a president. We can build up an army. We can defend our country. If we don't work enough, work harder because it's our country. We have a country to defend. Friends from Hong Kong, you don't have. That's the difference. As a Taiwanese. We should be proud of. We are next to a giant China, under this kind of threat. It's quite easy to become an authoritarian system because the threat is so huge. Communist is so terrified. So let's don't vote. Let's support Xiao Bingjun as a president forever. It's easier. It's more convenient. But no, Taiwanese people. Has pursued democracy for 40 years and more. Under this kind of threat, we still become a so energetic democracy country. Equality, freedom, freedom of speech. Most our internet is. Some people say it's too free, too free, too much freedom. But however. It's a value we cherish. As a Taiwanese people, under this kind of threat, we still can keep our faith on freedom and democracy, and we create such a great economy. Our performance is so good. Eighty percent and more advanced semiconductor chip produced by Taiwan. A lot of machine design manufactured by Taiwan. So you are the future, but they are not the past. We are together to share this kind of pride together. And we are when we're talking about security, imagine if China launched a full-scale invasion tomorrow. If that happened, can we survive? Can we survive? Where is your confidence from? I believe yes. We can survive from that. For example, the latest poll shows six sixty-five percent of Taiwan teenage younger people. From 20 to 40, they are willing to fight to defend our democracy, our country. If China launch a full-scale invasion in Taiwan, if we can start a business, accept people to to get trained how to shoot, how to use the rifles, how to how how to manipulate those tactics in battles. You can make fortune now, because people they are eager to get the to attend this kind of training program. 
So if someone invites you to invent a business like that, give him money, you will make a fortune. <laughs> and that kind of eager means in Taiwan, a lot of people, they have determination to protect his own country, Taiwan. My president, Tsai Ing-wen, she decided to increase 30% national defense budget this year. Those budget represent our determination. One day, maybe tomorrow, maybe six years later, or I don't know, if China is so stupid to launch a full-scale invasion to Taiwan, they will be defeated, they will be destroyed, they will fail, I can guarantee you. We have this kind of determination. They, they will survive when they try to pass the Taiwan Strait. They will be destroyed by all missiles. They, if they try to be a good neighbors, we are helping them to develop their business model, something like that. So, something I have to say, I'm sorry. Maybe to rescue Hong Kong democracy is a little bit late. But I know you are working on lobby, some register, some, some law passed in the United States. But to help Taiwan, it's not too late. To defend, to defend Taiwan is our own responsibility. We know that. My house is just across of the, the street of Tainan Air Force Base. Every morning, as a legislator, I have to do to participate in some some funeral, something like that. Every morning, when I have my cup of coffee, I can hear the thunder noise from our air fighters. Then I know here it comes again. POA, they are sending their fighters to harass our Southeast ABI's load. Every day. Every day. Almost every day. To protect my home, to protect my country from those kind of bullying and the invasion is our own responsibility. We cannot, we cannot rely our country on somebody else's shoulder, even our best friends. However, if we realize the value of Taiwan, look, look at the map. If China sees Taiwan, the first island chain will be disappeared. One island, North, North Mariana, will be no, no longer important. China will, will become the dominant power in West, West Pacific Ocean. Look at the map. If China occupied Taiwan, 80% of energy transportation line to Japan and Korea will be controlled by China. China will choke the throat of Japan. So that's, if you look at the map, you know the value the strategic value of Taiwan. And look at the, the supply chain. If Taiwan stop providing semiconductor, stop providing chips, according to European, European report, the whole world factory will be shut down within three weeks. Without Taiwan, the world cannot even make, produce a car. It's our value. And then look at us, look at FAPA. Taiwan is the front line of democracy. Taiwan is the front line of freedom. Taiwan is a symbol of what we believe and fighting for. So if, if the world, including the United States, try to give a hand to help Taiwan, it's not helping Taiwan, it's helping the world's interest. To defend Taiwan means to defend the value of the world. And Taiwanese people, 23 million people, 
we we are there. We have been there for decades. We are facing this kind of threat every day, every minute, every minute. Sometimes we even forgot, forget we have this kind of threat. We still live in normal life. So today I'm here to share some thoughts with you with my limited English. Yeah, Taiwan, Taiwan will be secure. I do believe so. I'm there, my friends there, my family there, my three sons there. I believe they will defend this country because that's our only only one. That's our only what we have. We not we, we have no other place to go. So my son just passed the examination. He my second son he studied in Taiwan University. And I got his phone call, he got Kobe last yesterday. No, nothing, nothing wrong. Kobe is okay. <laughs> China is terrible. <laughs> Kobe is from China. <laughs> My 18 years old son, sometimes he will come to sit at my desk and uh, ask some question about 228, about massacre, about why why you lawmaker pass this law, and why, why this way. So last time I asked him, are you afraid of if China launch a full scale invasion to Taiwan, and that uh, you may drop your school, then go to the military, serve for the country. Are, are you scared or do you have any worry about this? And he said, he don't, he don't like it. He, he doesn't like it. He doesn't want that kind of scenario to happen. But if, if it happened, yeah, he's, he's, he said he and his friend, they believe that's, that's something, that's their application because no one else will do that for them. He think that's their, that, that's, that's their application, that's, that's the mission they have to do, no matter if he like it or he doesn't like it. Yeah, so my, my point of this, I, I, my, my, my faith increased a little. Yeah, I do believe I will be secured. So, today, thank you, Fangha. 謝謝爸爸感謝你七十天來七十天前四十年幾回四十天前我若這樣問問問問題幾回你敢會記得你四十天前你在從啥在這吃頭路在上班阿家各位會記好心水提一部分出來幫助台灣這個這個這個選舉
，啊，当我咧新扎的时阵，以前我做助理的时阵，伫个国防委员会，民进党嘛手甲脚起来，起来拢毕业啦，较少。但是自蔡英文做总统了后，阮个国防委员会永远拢要保持多数。每一届要做唱水港、潜水艇，还是要做 BBF 十六 V， 还是任何对台湾安全有关系的问题时阵，总统阮这个委员会是另外一百个委员会，唯一甲总统一块，伊个这块有关系，一针拢袂当尿。啊，我甲各位报告，第一。即过去五六冬的时间，国民党想要杀台湾的国防预算，想要杀买武器的计划，伊结果我陪来花费时，因看到美国人第一件来讲，阮拢支持买武器，我伫边仔都看到鬼的，<笑>所以这位卖伊无讲，你你也较歹做，叫你来续子。但我要甲伊讲的是，过去这六冬，咱的国防预算，国民党想要阻挡的。无一条党会成功，阮拢伫遐徛伫遐，顾台湾作为一个国家的安全，阮收掉啊！我拢坐遐讲到，伊讲啊，台湾的法律吼，像三亚啦遐，遐真强的啦，同处同啦遐啦吼。阮伫两千零十八年到从零十九年，我提案修改六个甲国家安全有关的法案。你讲这法案有效无效？当然，你看到最近佫掠到一挂吼，判则轻的，迄拢是伫个法律通过以前的行为啦。法律上有诶行为，就爱照有诶法啦吼。然后要甲伊讲一个消息，通过遮个国安相关的法律条款了，有一个团体叫做爱中华人民共和国同心会吼，爱国同心会吼，无去啊，走路啊，你唔知啊吼，做带头。做会长啊，迄个带起来死啊！啊，迄个伫个西门町甲台湾人配水暖，迄个吼，即马走路咪伫个中国，唔敢倒来起诉通缉当中，即、這个爱国同心会无去啊！白人张安乐，安尼做欢喜好事。白人张安乐因为洗钱，伊甲因囝因为摕中国的资金伫个台湾舞弄，虽然你假，但是民主社会，你要做一个正当，互你去做。虽然你做一个政党伫咧台湾咧活动，但你招去党员，若毋是白党个，就是唱钱，大家拢歹拼。除了用一般个刑法甲伊办以外，白龙迄个同处党，因为洗钱用中国资金介入台湾相关个代志，洗钱防治法，即马嘛甲伊起诉咧处理当中。啊，阮做即犯罪相关个法律嘛修改过。所以，伊虽然是真猛吼，你注意看，自迄个法律通过以后吼，歹人就是歹人，歹人创啥？歹人惊死，小人惊怕，所以啊，伊即马都无啥路用啊。所以有咧行，有咧进步，有可能你无满意，但一步一步有咧做。好，明仔载考生我特别陪陪去加州去讲一场，明仔载同一个时间，我利用转机的时间吼。伊家手讲一条了，就来跳着飞机飞转去台湾。最后要甲发拍，讲四十岁周周年生日恭喜，恭喜恭喜恭喜会长，甲所有发拍 member， 嘛要甲各位报告，咱这个台湾会愈来愈好。台湾是一个 powerful country， 台湾是一个强国有力的国家，不止经济强，爱心强。民主强，逐项拢强，强到隔壁迄个阿强啊，逐项咧起笑。啊，所以，阮来等于把这国家搞好。啊，若做无到的所在，请你给我意见。有时阵，大可减肥吼，买买买啊来，有诶部分食安尼。啊，有诶部分，镜头拢送你来 ER 去诊室，我买分优先顺序来做。总统做记诶。在有诶代志，先做一项，甲先做一项，有选择，毋是我诶事。我拢希望赶时间，安尼一个拢好啊。无法度，我讲要起一条高速公路，嘛一边有船征收，做路嘛一做十担，何况是一个国家诶起做。所以我知影做一个台美人，正用心嘛正急，但有一挂代志伫面对困难当中，团结总是。爱顾家，啊，这家我得顾好。啊，我相信，伫
两千零二诶二十二年就今年，到两千零二十七年，即未来即五年诶时间，咱可能是面对诶危险上大，美国拢安尼讲嘛吼，危险上大，啊，爱努力代志上多，但是五年过了，咱可能就是出分啦。发牌中止内面有一条是，台湾变作一个。独立自主的国家，我真的怀有美意啊！我相信到迄个时刻，咱有有充足的各方保护家己，咱有新世代学者优秀的少年人一代一代接好起来。到迄个时阵，国民党无啊，民主党解散啊，所以话咱国里面咱国，各各国单哦，各国单哦。我各个人啊，我希望咱个国家会当愈来愈正常，啊，也来哦，一定会来。就像这四十年来，恁所相信的代志，一项一项拢变作真嘞。所以，多谢每一个台湾人，感谢 ，Thank you, Harry. You are not aged. 一万多下笑人 ，You are so young forever. 感谢每一个。帮助台湾的朋友，不管头段两位众议员还是每一位，感谢你，你给阮一代，我甲小米是正港代啦，给阮一代有遮大个空间，遮大个舞台，遮多个代志通做，阮一代一定会甲国家保护好，让后一代有一个强、美丽、富裕、公平、自由、民主的国家，叫做台湾。我相信台湾先生，感谢各位，祝福，拜拜，谢谢，谢谢。那多谢，顶部委员，呃 ，Thank you， 呃 ，Legislator。Next， we are going to watch a con <coughs> congratulatory video from former Taiwan President Chen Shui-bian。边啊，上届庆祝，但系台湾人讲用俗语话，我啊，总会长、干部事，各位会长，各位干部，各位先生、甲嘉宾，各位咱台湾国的主人，大家平安，大家恭喜啊，大家好。啊，边啊，记者。要来恭喜咱发布四十周年的生日纪念，生日快乐！而且嘛，要来特别向咱发布四十年来，为着要来巩固、深化台湾甲美国两国的关系，尤其伫国的外交的推动、所做的付出甲贡献，来表示十二万分的敬意甲谢意。阿边啊，其实咱就来公开宣誓，即卖嘛已经真做熟悉，就是所有嘅中华民国嘅护照爱加注台湾。所以伫五年了后，两千零七年，咱发布二十五周年，我嘛甲大家共同来点个需要疫苗。我相信有这些代志，咱已经实现。但是，阿哥有无够个所在，这条路阿哥食坎坷，嘛食坎坷，亲像咱发爸，咱长期所追求个自民自国，咱所追求个台湾个外交关系，应该爱来得到美国个承认，咱要来继续推杀，就是台湾要来加入。联合国，所以不管是自民、自国、外交、新任台湾、加台湾、日本，当初是咱阿未行了的一条非常重要的民主道路。当然，而且咱嘛知影，因为咱我八四十年来，大家共同的努力甲打拼，咱会当伫台湾管理法通过了后，过来经过十几年的努力甲打拼，咱。有一个台湾旅行法的通过，台湾旅行法，予咱有机会从这五个人的乌名单来来取消。所以最后，我要甲大家共同变得顺利。咱台湾的
民主道路，台湾的国家路要安怎行，嘛要靠咱大家继续来努力，做伙来打拼。第一，就是希望讲咱的台湾的总统、干部总统。会当伫台湾旅游啊，取消无人，王爷大了后，会当顺利去美国华府来访问，尤其会当去美国嘅国会众议院来发表公开嘅演讲。第二点就是，咱台湾驻美国嘅代表处，唔是铁佗路，应该正名正做台湾代表处。伫台湾的 A I T 嘛，应该爱正名正做美国代表处。当然，最后上个重要的关键，就是伫两千零七年的时阵，我记得 A I T 杨书记处长话讲，伊讲台湾的国际地位对着美国来讲是悬而未决，意思就是讲台湾地位未定，啊，这个是非常重要的关键。所以，而且咱就爱讲继续来争取，希望美国会当来取消台湾地位未定这款的论调。台湾是一个国家，台湾是一个有主权的国家，这爱要继续来努力，做伙来打拼，就咱今仔日大会顺利圆满成功。多谢，多谢，谢谢。Um, we were we were actually also expecting uh, a call from from our Taiwan pa president Tsai Ing-wen, but uh, we went into some technical issues, so eventually um, the high hope collapsed. But uh, it's very unfortunate that uh, we did ask uh, for that. Yeah. So uh, next we are going to have uh, two more videos from uh, friends of Congress. The first one is uh, from Bob Menenzi. Uh, the second, uh, the second one is from uh, Representative Amada Coleman Redwagon. Hello, this is Senator Bob Menendez, a senior senator from New Jersey and chairman of the United States Senate Foreign Relations Committee. It's an honor to be invited to speak to you on this day of celebration, commemorating the Formosa Association for Public Affairs 40th anniversary. I have a deep respect for your commitment to freedom, human rights, and democracy for the people of Taiwan. At a time when tensions across the Taiwan Strait are running high, the grassroots work that FAPA does is more important than ever. It is no secret to everyone listening that Taiwan will face considerable pressure from China in the years ahead. And with Beijing continuing to try and isolate Taiwan, there should be no ambiguity about our determination to stand with the people of Taiwan and their democracy. From China's efforts to coerce Lithuania and to separate Taiwan from those who stand with it, to cyber hacking and misinformation campaigns within Taiwan itself, to fomenting political chaos and uncertainty that would undermine Taiwan's democracy and governance. In the face of such challenges, I hope that you consider the United States a real friend, a friend committed to assuring that the Taiwanese people can determine their own future, a friend that will support Taiwan when China tries to make it pay an economic price for its democracy, a friend that will stand with Taiwan when China tries to deprive it of international partners. That's why earlier this year I introduced the bipartisan Taiwan Policy Act of 2022. This legislation represents a seminal statement of the United States' absolute commitment to stand with Taiwan, reinvigorating our diplomatic strategy to maintain cross-strait stability and security. And I want to assure you that Congress will continue to support U.S. arms transfers to Taiwan, and we will uphold our obligations under the Taiwan Relations Act. In addition to our military and security partnership, we are also committed to strengthening our economic relationship. That includes a bilateral investment agreement. It includes Taiwan's incorporation to the broader regional trade architecture. 
as well as supporting Taiwan diplomatically so it can maintain its international space. We have our work cut out for us. We are building a strong base of support and share a common purpose. With the incredible dedication and hard work of FAPA members and the Taiwanese community, we have made great progress deepening the relationship between the United States and Taiwan over the past several decades. And it's critical that we continue to maintain and build on our positive momentum. Strengthening every dimension of our relationship is in the best interest of both our countries and both our peoples. So today, let us celebrate Taiwan's vibrant democracy, a democracy that stands as an inspiration for those who strive for freedom of speech, for the rule of law, and respect for human rights around the world. And let us pledge to work even harder to bring our two nations closer together for a more prosperous future in the years and decades to come. And warm greetings to Papa President Min Chen, members and friends. I have commitments in American Samoa, but it's a real pleasure for me to still take part in your event tonight. If I was at the house in Alexandria, I would have only been a couple of minutes away from you at the Double Tree in Arlington. Instead, when you view this, I'll be over 7,000 miles away at my home on the shores of beautiful American Samoa with a seven hour time difference. More than I realized eight years ago, that's what members of Congress do. We're always on the move. It can be a lot of airplane time, but it's a blessing that enables me to serve my constituents in American Samoa. And recently allowed me the honor and opportunity to visit Taiwan again. I served four terms in Congress, but before that, as early as May 2009, I already met Poon and his lovely wife, Iris. The two of them, my husband Fred and I, would get together to go and see the opening of the exhibition, so I already knew a lot about Taiwan before joining the Congress. Then in a previous Congress, I had my first visit to Taiwan and learned so much. When Senator Markey invited me to join his congressional delegation to Taiwan and other Pacific countries last month, I did not hesitate and said yes right away. One of the highlights of the trip, of course, was meeting with President Chai. This was the third time I've met with her, including June 2015, when FAPA hosted a reception for her. So when I saw President Tsai in the presidential palace in Taipei again last month, it was very nice to hear her say, a familiar face. As you know from the news reports, it was an intense visit right after the live fire missile test that China held in the aftermath of the Pelosi visit to Taiwan. Of course, we did not directly experience that but it was happening nearby. I can tell you that it's a very oppressive feeling to know the giant neighbor just a hundred miles away is bullying and harassing you while you seek to peacefully go on with your lives. While I've always felt strongly that we need to keep Taiwan free, my trip there last month strengthened me even further in this belief. China should leave the people of Taiwan alone and let them live in peace. As long as I'm in Congress, I will certainly do what lies in my capability to keep Taiwan free. Let me end by thanking the organization for doing its important work on Capitol Hill. Who knows, would I have been on the Markey Congressional Delegation if I had not met our friends at Papa in 2009? So, congratulations to you all and have a happy 40th anniversary to Fafa.
时间交予总会长，咱要来颁发发发 Legend Award。<laughs> so let's uh, continue our uh, award ceremony. So actually, uh, we have five individuals that are identified and uh, selected to receive this award. Uh, so next one, uh, next uh, Papa Legend Award goes to Mark Chen. Mark <laughs> Chen. Mark is one of the funding fathers of Papa, who left the U.S. for a long and esteemed career in politics in Taiwan. He is the last living of the early Papa president. He actually second, right? Second president of Papa. We actually invited Mark to come join us and give a keynote speech tonight. But even though he's no longer banned from entering Washington DC like he was when he was a foreign minister. Um, he unfortunately was too much for him at his age. It's a too much a big under undertaking for him to fly back and forth. He reluctantly declined to come here. I actually met him last year when I went back to Taiwan. Have a very uh, joyful uh, meeting and conversation. Um, but Mark was so kind to record a short award acceptance of this uh, video clip. Let's take a look. Let's draw the clip. <laughs> So I'm uh, deeply honored to have this opportunity to speak to all of you today with my friends from the old days and I feel I'm once again experiencing the father fever. Any other person due to many reasons including uh, COVID-19. But still, I feel everything is so me. I'd like also to express my sincere gratitude and thanks to Father President Ms. Chen and also as much as to all Father members and longtime friends like Kuhn and Gary Mandelwitz for everything they have done in the past 40 years. Now, first in my mind, among many aspects of Papa and Devon, I'm particularly grateful to our good friend, Congressman Shabbat of Ohio, who seriously took great efforts to ease the restriction forbidden Taiwan's Minister of Foreign Affairs from visiting Washington, D.C. And although a visit by Taiwan's foreign minister to Capitol Hill has yet still not happened. I believe we are closer than ever. And that is gradually becoming possible. Uh, thanks to all of you at FAPA. So yes, I have always had a soft start for FAPA in my heart. When we found it for about 40 years ago, we were young. We were full of hope and we were full of passion. It was not a glamorous job that we did at FAPA for Taiwan democracy in those early days. We would travel all over the US and would stay with several of us in one bedroom, tiny bedroom, in the cheapest roadside motels. Why? Because just so we could save money. But we needed to do it because Taiwan independence was our strongest belief and our strongest motivator. So I'm glad that we have seen the fruits of our labor 
the past 40 years, we always think that every day Taiwan gets a little closer to becoming a fully independent normal country. And I still believe that. Thanks again to you guys. All of us at FAPA are full of hope and we are full of passion as well. Maybe you are not that young anymore, but two of the three ain't bad. So indeed, FAPA is always on my mind. A case in point, whenever I was in Washington, D.C., I always, always made a special effort to drop by the FAPA office and took the FAPA staff for lunch. And I always treat them. We never go Dutch <laughs> because I'm obliged to reciprocate them for their last Taiwan. So let me conclude by stating that I'm honored to receive this new FAPA Legend Award. I see I'm in very threat company. I greet you from the other side of the world, from Taiwan. I do forward to seeing you again when I'm in the US. And so let me end by saying, don't leave Taiwan, don't leave the US, and don't leave Fa-ha! That's very important. So uh, we'll try to deliver that word to him. To Dr. Hua Lin Li. Dr. Li Hua Lin. Uh, Dr. Li's uh, management of the fund he set up for Fa-ha two days ago is so amazing and so fantastic that I believe all of us gathered here tonight, we wish that Dr. Lee were the manager of our personal funds as well. <laughs> Unfortunately, he doesn't take a, a new class. Um, let's have a, a round, loving applause for Dr. Pauline Lee, please. <laughs> Dr. Lee is unfortunately cannot make it this time, and we'll meet him uh, later this this year in San Diego when we have a board meeting, so hand that to him. Okay. And the fourth Papa Award goes to John She. Like John Shea, our inspiration to all of us. If you knew him, you will not disagree. Year after year, rain, three or snow, they keep pushing for Taiwan independence. They do the groundwork, they walk the walk, they talk the talk, they go lobby, they attend every meeting. They raise the funds for FAPA and never complain and never was disappointed. It is therefore no wonder that under John's leadership, the FAPA Texas North chapter has won the chapter of the year award several times. I personally hope that John will be a FAPA lifetime chapter president. But I'm excited to hear that he has managed to pass the button to Cindy Liu. Cindy is the new chapter person. Cindy, where are you? Hey! We're so happy to see you here, sir. So let's hear, yeah, let's, let's hear a big round of applause for Jiang Xie. Jiang Xie.
the last but not the least. The Papa Legion Award goes to Kun Bra. <laughs> After he has been with Fasho for over 33 long years. He is Taiwan man. He is Taiwanese, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you read it or not. I read uh, Carol Shee's uh, blog about Kun a few years ago, right? I was touched by the story. Hey, Carol's right there. Okay, great. Oh. <laughs> when Ke uh, when Ke oh, Kun came to the U.S. in 1989 with his then girlfriend, okay, okay, his girlfriend wanted to go home and wanted him to come alone, ask him to choose between her and Taiwan. <laughs> and you know the answer, right? <laughs> he chose Taiwan. I'm not sure all of us can... <laughs> I'm not so sure, sure all of us will do the same decision, right? But he did. But then he found Iris. And they have been married for 16 happy years. Long years. <laughs> he married the best beauty in a capital hill, okay? Iris was a children to be in that name, okay? And the hill, right? <laughs> so, in the end, he won twice. He worked for the country he loves, and he got a Taiwanese wife. So let's give, let's hear it for Kun Brown one more time. Give <laughs> speech time by um, <coughs> congratulating Mrs. John Shea, Chao Wei, here, get up Chao Wei, it's her birthday today. So, let me use my three minutes by singing all of those happy birthday. We start with the Fapa cheer and we end with the happy birthday for Chao Wei. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday
now we're going to take a group photo. So everybody stay. But do they stand up? Face to the. Okay, so yeah, whatever you are. Yeah, so this one wants to come in. There's a lot of space in the middle over there. That's the way, yeah. Can get one, two, three cheese. We are Alright, last one. Taiwan Sam Sam. Anniversary. 